Today I'll be talking about uh, tight security for signature schemes, but I'll be fo focusing mostly on signature schemes built from our identification schemes. And this is joint work with uh, Pierre-Alain Fouk, uh, Vadim Lyubashevsky, and Mehdi Tibushi. Okay. The remote is this way. Okay. Which one is the... <laughs> Sorry for the technical problem. <laughs> no, but to change the slides. <laughs> Oh, it's this one. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that, that gives an idea of what the talk will be, but hopefully it's going to be better than that. <laughs> um, so since it's um, I've probably already heard this so many times today, but yet one more time, just, uh, just to recap. So this talk is about signature schemes, so in which we imagine there is a key generation algorithm that generates the secret and private key, uh, the secret key for the sign and the public key for the, uh, that can be used for verification. And the goal is that uh, like, uh, for this type of uh, schemes, what is the standard notion of security? And here we'll, we'll be talking about strong existential unforgeability under chosen message attacks. And it's this standard notion in which, given a public key for the scheme, the adversary can query an oracle to obtain sign valid signatures for messages of its choice, and eventually has to come up with a new pair of message and signature which he did not obtain through, uh, through the oracle. And we consider the scheme secure, if the probability of such event happening is, is negligible. So, since in this talk I'll be focusing mostly on random oracle-based uh, constructions, uh, like in the, in, for random oracle constructions too, the most common methods for building signature schemes is uh, first full domain hash, in which uh, we imagine that we have a, a trapdoor one-way permutation and a random oracle, and the signature is simply the, the inverse of uh, computed on the hash of the message. And, and the other type is building through identification uh, schemes, in which we imagine that we start with a secure identification scheme, and we make it non-interactive with the help of a random oracle. So in this talk, we'll be considering mostly uh, what is a typical three-move identification scheme to which we refer as canonical, and in which the prover first will send a uh, commitment and will obtain a challenge from the verifier. And, uh, and the prover has to come up with a response. And the, the decision of the verifier, I'm actually getting confused with the buttons, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a deterministic um, uh, is, is a function of the transcript of the conversation. And if uh, they, the typical way of converting such uh, identification schemes into a signature scheme is to use the fiat chemu transform, in which we simply compute the challenge as the hash of the message and the commitment. So it's a pretty standard way of building it. But what about uh, tightness of such constructions? Um, so here we'll only be talking about constructive constructions, so no non-uniformity -uniform reductions. So no, there is no controversy here, hopefully. Um, so in these schemes, uh, what do we mean by tightness? As Alfred mentioned earlier today, usually a uh, reduction uh, scheme is considered tightly secure if the probability to break the scheme and uh, it's close to 
that of breaking the underlying assumption and the time, and the time uh, complexity should be about the same. So, and why is this important? Because first of all, it should help setting the parameters of this, setting up the parameters of the scheme. As Alfred was saying, sometimes this is not really taken into account, but um, it would, uh, at least we forget tight secure that we don't have to worry about this. But, so how uh, can we get tight security for signature schemes? So the case that uh, we were talking about that we saw today, for instance, alternatives to get uh, tight security for the full domain hash. The first one to consider that was the uh, PSS, in which you add a random salt to the hash function, to the input of the hash function before computing the inverse. And that hash function, the, the random salt is usually something uh, like, say, linear in the number of the security parameter. Then later, Katz Wong actually showed that this random salt just needs to be one, uh, one bit. But the verification is actually a bit different because uh, you don't include the random salt in the signature in the Katz Wong scheme. And, but the, in the verifier, you just have to try both options, both values, but, which is okay in this case because you only have two options. Then you have other options which by Go and Jaraki, which is based on CDH, and uh, we just saw it today in the first talk of this session, which was uh, worked by Kakvi and Kiltz. Um, but uh, they have a tight security proof of Fudum, uh RSA, F FDH, based on RSA. But uh, the, the reduction, uh, the assumption is the fire hiding assumption. So what about the exact security of identification schemes? So actually, about 10 years ago, uh, together with uh, uh, Anne, Bellari, and uh, Prempri, we showed a very simple proof for the, uh, the fiat chemi transform in the random oracle model, which just assumes that the underlying identification schemes is secure against passive attacks. So in the security, uh, you have a loss QH in the security reduction and some negligible terms that come up, comes up, for instance, when you have collisions between the way you, you answer with the programming of the random oracle due, when trying to answer a signature queries. So, but here we don't say anything about the proof of the, how one proves the passive security of uh, identification schemes. And usually to prove that, you use some type of rewinding and uh, the tendency is that you, you end up having an epsilon square loss in the security reduction to the underlying computational problem. Uh, more direct proof can be given using the forking lemma, but that proof also loses a factor QH. So can we, can we do better than that? And actually, um, before Katz Wong, actually I forgot to include in the slides, there was a proposal by Mikali and Raisin uh, that proposed a uh, swap method in which instead of computing uh, the commit, uh, the challenge as the hash of the message and the commitment, you compute, the, you set the commitment as the hash of the message and the challenge. And he was actually able, they were actually able to provide a tight security proof, but there, it doesn't always work because you kind of need to be able to compute um, the response for a given value of the commitment. So, for instance, discrete log-based signature schemes, you don't know how to, to do, the, their method does not apply. And in Katz Wong, it actually shows a different idea. Instead of uh, relying uh, on a, a, proof of a, a proof of knowledge, you kind of there you use a fiat chemi heuristic based on a proof of membership. For, for instance, the DDH problem. And they showed a very 
tight reduction to the decision defilement problem. So in this work, we actually show, uh, we extend their results to other settings. In particular, we show new schemes based on the decisional short discrete log problem on the ring LWE uh, on the subset sum. And um, th th all, all of these schemes are actually quite simple. And, but to prove it, we actually we give a generic proof we kinda, which kind of formalizes the intuition behind the cat's one signature. And for that, we, uh, this generic, to give this generic proof, we, call, uh, we propose a notion of lossy identification scheme. And, bec and our result actually is generic because it's a, uh, all the, we're talking about the fiat Tremier transform here, but there is no Q KH, QH factor loss in the reduction. So for the, the rest of the talk, I'll first very briefly mention, um, like pa we call passive security for identification schemes, and which will help us understand how it differs from uh, the, the notion of loss identification schemes. And then I will talk about instantiations. So as I, I was saying before, the, the identification schemes that we're considering here are the, of a very particular type, that uh, they have uh, three moves with a commit challenge response, in which the verified decision is going to be a deterministic function, function of the transcript. And the challenge will be a random string of a given length. And in the, in, in the work in which we showed before the security and the passive reduction, the notion is actually quite simple. We just imagine that we have this function here called the transcript uh, generation oracle, which given the public key, the secret key, you can generate transcripts of, for, the, uh, 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 for the identification scheme. This is quite simple. And now we imagine the following experiment. Uh, imagine an adversary that obtains the public key of the scheme and has access to this oracle, the transcript generation oracle. And now it can query this oracle as many times as it wants and will come up with a, a commitment and a state information. And then after it comes up with this commitment, we, give, uh, we generate a random challenge and ask him to come up with a response. And it should, the adversary wins the game if this is a valid response for the commitment and challenge, the commitment and challenge that, we're, that we got. And if, it's a, if an ID scheme is secure, this experiment should output one with very with negligible probability. And what we showed in that paper was uh, actually if the ID is secure, then there is a very simple reduction that, and the signature scheme, uh, the secure signature scheme is related to that of the identification scheme, but there is a QH factor loss, as I mentioned before. So how can we improve that? So. Here, uh, we're going uh, to, uh, we end up introducing this notion of a loss identification scheme in which we assume that there is an alternate key generation algorithm which instead of returning normal keys, will return lossy keys. Since um, in all of the schemes that we have in our paper, the, the lossy generation, there is no secret key associated with it we actually, uh, we, we have a simplified notion of a loss identification scheme, which considers that the loss key generation does not put any secret key, just a public key. So, and what are the properties for such schemes? The first one is the standard completeness property, meaning um, if a, a valid proof like generated honestly should get accepted. But here we assume that there is a, the, the adversary or the, a valid prover may abort every now and then and, does, and not return a valid response. So it's not one complete, but 
it can, uh, one complete would be the case that it never aborts, but there might be a post cases in which it does. Then there is this immutability property, which is that the transcript can be generated uh, uh, without the, the knowledge of the secret key. And this is a simplification because all of the schemes that we have in our paper do not need um, the secret key to generate the transcript, so we simplified. But a more general notion actually can be given that, uh, that you should just be able to simulate that with the lossy secret key in the public key. Then we have the standard notion, which is key indistinguishability meaning you should not be able to distinguish between a uh, lossy, uh, lossy key and a normal key. And then the, the final one is the lossiness, which means that the adversary should not be able to break the identification scheme, but here we're talking about an unbounded adversary when the public key is lossy. And what we show in the paper is that if the scheme um, actually meets this notion, then we have a reduction which is tight with respect to the key indistinguishability property. And the point here is that such a, this is actually the only part that we use a computational assumption. And the rest here, like the absolute, it, these are all statistical terms, which uh, although we, it's not tight with respect to these terms, they, uh, uh, our security reduction is tight with respect to the to the only term which is non uh, computational and to compare here we see that now we no longer has, have the QH lost uh, in the reduction and what is the idea is actually the idea is extremely simple in which the in the proof we to show that this is the case we just use the transcripts, just like in the original proof, to simulate the signing oracles. But as in most proofs based on lossy um, uh, primitives, at one point you just replace the public key with a lossy key. And that we can show very easily that the probability will change by at most a factor which depends on the, the in this key indistinguishability, plus a, uh, a factor QS yeah, uh, epsilon s, which is due to see if the simulation is not perfect when using public as normal key and a lossy key, public key. And then once we are dealing with the, we have a lossy public key, we can very easily argue that the success probability of the adversary in breaking the identification scheme is at most QH epsilon l, which is the term due to the that comes from the lossiness of the identification scheme. And the QH factor is, um, is similar to the, the QH factor that shows up in the other paper, which is at one point we have to guess the hash query that uh, was used in the forgery uh, to be able to break the underlying identification scheme. But here, we lose QH factor, but it's with respect to a statistical term. So now let's look at instantiations. So uh, here even we don't have this one in the paper, but as we said, it's a generalization of uh, the cat's one um, idea. And here you have a very simple protocol based on DDH. The protocol we have, the public key is a, a DH tuple. And to uh, like the commitment, you simply pick um, another DH tuple for, uh, in which you know the, the randomness R. And then we got a, a challenge and then you compute CR plus uh, CX plus R where X is the secret key. And you accept if, um, if, uh, if both equations here uh, verify. And the proof is actually quite simple. First, completeness is, uh, it's one, the, the, the protocol never aborts in this case. The simutability follows from the zero knowledge property of the protocol. The indistinguishability follows directly from the DDH assumption. 
because you cannot tell apart a lossy key from a non-lossy key. And the lossiness is a very simple argument that you can see that if the public key is not uh, DH tuple, then when given AB, you can show that uh, there exists at most one challenge for which you can come up with a response. So, and, uh, and because of that, the lossiness follows uh, the, the epsilon in this case would be one uh, minus, uh, it would be one over Q, the size of the, the group. So what about the schemes that we actually have in the paper? So the first one is based on the, um, the Geo Pupa Sten uh, identification scheme, and it uses the short discrete log problem. Here in which we imagine that uh, X is short, but not that short, of course, that uh, we, we, uh, it's, uh, the secret key is of length uh, C bits. And the public key is G to the X, and here we pick Y from a larger range, and we simply send U, which is G to the Y, to the other side, and we get a random challenge of size of K bits. And then we compute Z, but unlike the original protocol, we actually abort if Z is not in a good range. And this, uh, uh, semp, uh, this technique was already used by, in, by Lubashevsky in his Asia Crypt 2009 paper, if I'm not wrong. And he actually, this, uh, this abort actually helps us obtain a better parameters for the scheme. And then we, ac uh, we accept if it, uh, Z is in the right range and if the verification and if this last equation works. And in fact here, uh, what is the idea for the proof? It's similar to what we did for the DDH case in which once uh, you should not be able to distinguish between uh, non loss and lossy key based on the short decisional short discrete log problem. And the loss, the, the lossiness, we proved just by a statistical term that we show that once X is chosen from the, uh, the, the bigger, from a bigger group, then, um, then the, pr the probability that there is, uh, that there exists a valid response for a given challenge, uh, that uh, there exists a challenge for which there exists a valid response is, is negligible. And then we also show something similar. As you can see, even the pictures look the same. Um, another one based on the uh, subset sum problem, and in which has the same characteristics of the, the one based on the short discrete log. And in the proceedings, we also talk about the one uh, based on lattices on the ring LWE. So just to summarize, in, um, it wasn't supposed to be there. Um, in this paper, we extended the, the results by cat swung to other settings. In particular, we gave protocols based on decisional short discrete log, the ring LWE, and the subset sum problems. And we tied generic proofs for what we called a loss identification scheme. And actually, it seems uh, that our security also holds in, what is, uh, in the quantum accessible random oracle model because our reductions is history free. So actually, I discussed that with Mark, and so it's, he, he said, yeah, it should work, but we didn't check all the details. Well, blame him if it's not a, <laughs> a valid statement. <laughs> so, and that concludes my talk.